I've often joked that everyone with a 3D printer has a roll of flexible material lying somewhere around that they've tried to use once and gave up. Possibly a slight exaggeration, yes, but it's true. 3D printing with flexible materials is difficult. They compress and deform as traditional extruders force them into a hot end, often leading for the flexible material to find the path of least resistance and spilling out the side of the extruder assembly in spectacular fashion. So when the Flexion extruder kit hit the market from Diabas Engineering, it really caught my attention. The promise of fast, reliable extrusion of very flexible filaments seemed almost too good to be true. That, coupled with its almost alien looking design, has certainly made this upgrade kit very interesting indeed. But does it actually work, or is it just an expensive hop-up part? Well, I guess you'll have to watch to find out. So the Flexion is an upgrade kit designed for 3D printers using Mark 10 style extruders like the Wanhao i3 and the MakerBot Replicator. They have a single or dual upgrade kit available and there is kits planned for many more machines in the future as well as various ways you can adapt their current offering for other machines. The Flexion team sent me the single extruder kit to upgrade my Cocoon Create which is a Wanhao i3 V2 rebranded machine and the entire kit comes in a very nice looking box with precision cut foam holding all the bits in place. I was actually really surprised with just how much came with the kit including all the upgrade parts you need. You do however reuse your heater cartridge and thermistor. It came with no less than four nozzles ranging from 0.2 to 0.5 millimeter and even a metal shim in case your heater cartridge was undersized for the Flexion heat block. Very cool. Assembling the whole thing was, well, you can see for yourself. I actually did the entire process during a live stream and went from the machine with the original extruder already removed to the Flexion extruder installed and printing PLA within one hour. There's actually fully detailed instructions online which I only paid partial attention to during the stream and I had no issues at all. It was printing almost straight away, which is awesome. So what makes this extruder so different to every other one I've used so far? Well, several things. The feeder gear has minute teeth in a concave shape similar to early MakerBot feeder gears, which initially filled me with a lot of doubt because they always used to wear out on me as soon as a jam or clog occurred, not to mention they would fill up with material as it carved into jam filament. Well, that's not the case with the Flexion extruder at all. They've gone so far to include a cleaning brush in the extruder assembly, which rotates with the feeder gear and flicks away material which may have become stuck between the gear grooves. This is a huge plus for me because having to remember to clean out a feeder gear every 10th print or so sucks and now it does it by itself. I honestly wish 3D printers had this kind of thing from factory. But what makes the Flexion better at flexible material printing? Well, two main reasons. First, it's a fully supported extrusion path. So the biggest issue, as I mentioned with printing flexible materials, is they will kink if there is any gap between the feeder gear and the hot end, they will find the path of least resistance. So most extruder assemblies like the Mark 10 on the Wanhao have this gap and it leads to very unreliable filament printing with flexible materials or you need to print extremely slow to try and limit the chance of that filament wandering. The Flexion however is fully supported. From the moment it enters the hot end, it is fully guided from the feeder gear all the way to the nozzle through a PTFE tube. The tube even has a V-shaped cut in it to allow it to hug the feeder gear even closer for zero chance of the filament wandering. This is a great feature and one that I think many extruder manufacturers are starting to do now. But the Flexion also has one more extremely unique feature. And in my opinion, the whole reason this extruder works so well. It has a fixed tension using a four-stop cam system. Let me explain that one. Back in the day, extruders were either fixed distance between the feeder gear and bearing, or there would be a tensioning screw to adjust that gap. This was before someone realized they could just stick a spring-loaded arm onto the bearing and allow it to handle filaments, which varied in diameters, and the whole industry basically moved to that system from that point onwards. But the issue here is spring-loaded arms are bad for flexible filaments because they put way too much pressure on the material as it's extruding because it will actually squish too much. This leads to unreliable printing and annoying failures or the classic under extrusion issue you might be familiar with when printing with flexible materials. The Flexion however has four discrete tension steps ranging from one for very flexible materials up to four for very hard materials like a metal filled PLA. 
There's a grub screw for fine tuning the tension and once that's set, the tension is fixed. So it's this feature alone which I think is the secret sauce with the Flexion extruder and why it works so well. So that's enough about the design. How does it print? Well, to start off, I ran PLA through it and I literally chose an older file on my SD card and just went for it using Cocoon Create's green PLA. And wow, to be clear, I wasn't expecting to see any measurable difference in printing in PLA to the original Mark 10 extruder, but this print is far superior to the original. Even taking into account the different brands of PLA, you can see where there's infill issues on the first print and no problems in the second of the Flexion extruder. There's almost no stray blobs and you can even see the artifacting caused by the actual printer itself, which is crazy. So it does PLA well, sure. Big whoop, you're here to see how well it does flexible materials. And remember at the start I said everyone has a roll they've used once and never touched since because they couldn't get it to work at all? Well, this is mine. This is a flexible TPU and it is really soft. It feels like, literally feels like cold soft noodles. It supposedly has a Shaw rating of 85A, but it feels much softer than that and is even elastic as well. I loaded up a test cube which was originally sliced for PLA settings and it didn't really print well, which was expected because nothing was fine tuned. I started changing extrusion temperatures to 220 degrees C and I upped the extrusion multiplier to 105%. I then slowed the speed down to about 30 millimeters per second. And then next I fine tuned the extruder by setting it to number two and tightening the grub screw till it stopped slipping in the extruder. And you know what? It printed. I have never seen flexible infills like this before. There is no stringing. There is no under extrusion. This extruder had no issue keeping up at 30 millimeters per second. I think it could go faster. Oh, and it's worth noting I killed the print at this stage because I wanted to move on to something else and I wanted to keep that view of the infill going. So when I stopped it, there is a blob there, but that was me pausing the print, not any fault of the extruder. So now I knew my parameters, it was time to print, yeah, you guessed it, the octopus. Everyone seems to choose this print for testing flexible materials and I can see why. Considering this filament has never ever worked for me on any printer I've tried, I was stoked when I printed this octopus. It is tough, it is squishy, and the extruder was going at 30 millimeters per second. It's a little rough around the legs where the extruder did rapids between each leg, and this is probably fixable with lowering my temperature a bit or telling Simplify 3D to rapid through in, within the, per the perimeters of the print, not going outside of it. But when the print finished, I could not have been happier with the result. So conclusion time, should you upgrade your printer with the Flexion extruder? Well, if you're content with printing PLA all the time, then probably not. At 125 US for a single extruder kit, it's certainly not the cheapest option in terms of upgrading your printer, especially if the entire printer only cost you about $400. However, if you're serious about taking your 3D printer to the next level, the Flexion extruder is a no-brainer. I will be using this extruder from now on even when I'm printing PLA to get that improved result I was getting over the original Mark 10 extruder. And now my mind is already swimming with heaps of ideas on how to use this amazing flexible filament now that I know it can print reliably. So, if you want to get yourself a Flexion extruder, head over to flexionextruder.com and they have been awesome enough to provide me with a discount code to give to you guys. So if you just enter Maker's Muse, you get 10% off and I get a small kickback. So it's a win-win for everyone. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this review on the Flexion Extruder Kit, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future 3D printing reviews, tips or tricks here on Maker's Muse. And a huge thanks to all of our supporters over at Patreon. If you're interested in helping out the channel, you can head over to our Patreon. Even a dollar a month helps us do this thing as a full-time job, but our content on YouTube will always be free. I look forward to seeing you again shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later.